Okay, we have to evaluate limit x tending to 0 of integral 0 to x cos t squared dt divided by x. So, we have to ask ourselves a question. Is this a uh, problem about evaluating limits or about evaluating integrals? Which is the more important one? Yeah? Now, it looks like, just looking at the problem, that we need, in order to be able to evaluate the limit, we at least need to know what this numerator is. Yeah? So, evaluating the integral seems to be important. And let us try to do that. Yeah? So, integral from 0 to x of cos t squared dt. Let's say we substitute. Yeah? So, we substitute t squared is equal to u. That gives us 2t dt is equal to du. In other words, dt is equal to du by 2 root u. And then uh, for the limits, when t is equal to 0, u will be 0. When t is equal to x, u will be x squared. So, the integral now becomes uh, integral from 0 to x squared of cos u du divided by 2 root u. Now, initially, we just had a purely trigonometric argument, yeah, cos t squared dt. And now, we have changed that into a combination of a trigonometric and algebraic one. In other words, we made it more complicated. Yeah? So, this is not the right approach. Now, apart from substitution, there is another technique by parts, right? So, let's try by parts. So, we have uh, integral cos t squared dt. Uh, let's take cos t squared as the first part and 1 as the second part. So, then we have uh, cos t squared integral dt minus integral of d by dt cos t squared integral dt dt. So, that becomes uh, cos t squared into t minus integral of minus sine t squared into 2t into t dt. Uh, this turns out to be t cos t squared plus the integral of 2t squared sine t squared dt. And once again, if we look at it, we've changed a purely trigonometric argument, cos t squared, into a combination of a trigonometric and algebraic one. Yeah? Here, 2t squared sine t squared dt. And there's no way now to proceed. So again, this would seem to be a, a wrong approach. So let's take a look at it again. Yeah? We know that there is a limit. Yeah? We know that x is tending to 0. So we have to ask ourselves, what happens when x tends to 0? Yeah, when x tends to 0, this integral is from 0 to something that's tending to 0. In other words, no matter what the argument is inside the integral, whatever the integrand is, the definite integral will turn out to be something that is tending to 0. Yeah? So, the numerator is becoming closer and closer to 0, and the denominator is x. That is also becoming closer and closer to 0. In other words, we can use L'Hopital's rule. Yeah, and so, using L'Hopital's rule, it means that we need to be able to differentiate both the numerator and de denominator. And so, we need to use Leibniz's rule for differentiating an integral, which has variable limits of integration. So, doing that, um, taking the derivative of the numerator and derivative of the denominator. So, the derivative of the numerator would be derivative of the upper limit times the integrand at the upper limit minus derivative at the lower limit times the integrand at the lower limit. Now, the derivative at the lower limit, lower limit is a constant, so that becomes 0. The denominator is straightforward. Derivative of x with respect to x is 1. And so, we just now have to evaluate limit x tending to 0 of cos x squared, and that is trivial. It is 1. 